Flipped our camera around from the island off towards the northwest there. That's some pretty heavy showers and storms that are moving into northern and northeastern portions of Willesee County uh, this afternoon. Our radar in Brownsville is out, but this is giving us indication there of the stronger storms that have been developing. Also, our uh, lightning detection also picking up on those storms. So you can see the lightning as it moves southward into eastern, northeastern Willesee County. We've seen some just the east of Raymondville. And as our cold front continues to drift southward today, that will kick off, I think, a few more uh, until it pushes all the way through uh, by mid to late afternoon or so. Temperatures behind the front are much drier as far as the air mass is concerned. And then the temperatures mostly in the lower to middle 80s across the state. Uh, Laredo, typically by this hour, is well up in the 90s, 84 right now. Corpus Christi at 87. So uh, this is an early season front. It's weak, but what it will do for us once it pushes all the way through, the winds will shift to the north, much drier air will come in, the dew points will drop, and tomorrow morning is going to be just a very refreshing start to the day. So Futurecast is picking up on some of those storms trying to make their way through Willesee County. Then as we go through the afternoon, mid to late afternoon, there could be some more across portions of the lower valleys. That front moves a little bit further towards the south. Eventually that will all come to an end. We'll see the clouds break up as well and we'll have mostly clear skies overnight tonight. Highs today uh, in the upper 80s, some lower 90s out there. Rain chances are going to be highest across the lower valley, uh, lesser as you go out west. Valley average high for the date is 91. Out in the tropics, we have a lot going on, of course. That is Hurricane Ian. 115 mile per hour winds gusting up to around 140. It has weakened a little bit, but it was crossing Cuba. Now it's back over the open waters and a well defined eye. Uh, there uh, as it cr uh, moves off towards the north and it will be strengthening. This is the radar out of Key West and it shows those bands wrapping around going all the way up into South Florida now. The, the conditions in Florida are going to be deteriorating rapidly over the next uh, 6 to 12 hours or so as we anticipate the landfall tomorrow evening. Hurricane watches and warnings along the west coast of Florida. Flood watch for the entire state pretty much and then watches uh, along the east side of Florida. This is going to be a problem not just for tomorrow at landfall, but afterwards. I would expect that we're going to see a, a lot of flooding, power outages. We know the drill here. We've had them here, of course, in deep south Texas. But this one is going to be the strongest. If it makes a landfall near Tampa, the strongest that they have ever seen at the, in the Tampa St. Petersburg area. By 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, Category 3 storm with 125 mile per hour winds. It will briefly make it up to Category 4, and then there is Tampa. Once it makes landfall, it will weaken to a Category 1 storm. But notice the time between 7 p.m. Thursday to 7 a.m. I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Wednesday to 7 a.m. Thursday. It doesn't move very far. So it's still a Category 1 hurricane expected by 7 a.m. Thursday. And that's going to be causing, again, a lot of problems for the north central portions of Florida. Then that system will move off rapidly to the north and become a heavy rainmaker for portions of the southeastern U.S. Here's what our rainfall, one of our computer models, is picking up on uh, forecast rainfall accumulations up to tw uh, 15 to 20 inches. That's where you see the whites and the sh uh, shades of gray in there. But around that, still a lot of rain expected. But the eye expected to be making its way right in through here. And that's going to be a lot of rain in a very short period of time for the coast of Florida. And also storm surge, 6 to 9 feet for Sanibel up towards uh, Port Charlotte, 9 to 12 feet. And then up around Tampa, as you get into the Tampa Bay area, they've actually reduced this down now as the track is expected to be a little bit further towards the south. But still, any variance whatsoever, and that can be, like I say, a bigger problem for them. For us, though, take a look at how beautiful it's going to get. Uh, once the front makes it through tonight, we'll be back to, uh, into the 60s tomorrow. How about 66, Polly, and then 64, some lower to middle 60s for the rest I'll of the em. week. <laughs> Upper 80s to near 90 degrees with drier air in place. You will notice the difference big time.